With the end of Season 17 quickly approaching, I thought it'd be fun to leave my final predictions on Season 18. We'll of course be talking about the raid, the story, Arc 3.0, and some other small stuff. Also, if you hear thunder, it's thunderstorming right now, that's why. Also, as you probably already know, I'm now partnered with Juju Energy, so if you want a healthy alternative to most other energy drinks, use code TOAD for 10% off. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to present a topic, talk about it, and assign a value based on how likely I feel it is to actually happen. So I'll say either highly unlikely, unlikely, likely, or very likely, depending on the idea presented. With that out of the way, let's jump right into the first topic, which is a new raid. Now, we know we're getting a new raid next season, though we kind of already know what it's going to be. It's confirmed that this new raid will be a remastered Destiny 1 raid, which narrows it down to three possibilities, Crota's End, King's Fall, and Wrath of the machine. This is a good time to mention that I will not be covering any leaks or rumors in this video, so this is completely spoiler free. As much as I know many would like it, I feel very confident that it won't be Wrath of the Machine, for two main reasons. First and foremost, we don't have SIVA as an enemy race in Destiny 2 yet. I find it highly unlikely that Bungie would reintroduce SIVA in a season and not an annual expansion. Now, they kind of raised the bar this season in reintroducing the Leviathan as a new destination, but I still feel like SIVA being essentially a whole Fallen variant set is a bit out of the realm of seasonal content, at least right now. On top of that, we already have Outbreak Prime, and quite frankly, I don't think SIVA really has a place in the story right now. However, there is one scenario that we'll talk about a little later. This, of course, leaves us with King's Fall and Crota's End. While I think it could be Crota's End, I'm gonna say it's unlikely, not impossible, and a very good argument could be made for it. After all, what's to say that Bungie won't just release the raids in the order they came out in? Though, honestly, I just get the feeling that Bungie wants to give Crota's End a bit more of an overhaul since it has a reputation for being the shortest and easiest raid ever. So of course my pick goes to King's Fall. With Sabathun's comments on the Taken King rising again, as well as a good amount of Dreadnought talk in the lore recently, I find this one very likely. Also, Bungie knows how much we like King's Fall. Imagine how hype people will be on August 23rd when they reveal Lightfall and at the end of the stream, they announce that starting right now, the new season is launched and King's Fall is back. This also of course means that we would more than likely get the Touch of Malice scout rifle back, though I would imagine it would get a slight nerf since Well of Radiance is a thing now, and those two things kind of clash a bit. While not certain, this feels like the way they'll go. Alright, so let's talk story. I once again have three options that I can think of, and we'll start with what I think might be the least likely of the three, in my opinion of course. A seasonal story surrounding the Hive, Taken, and the Dreadnought. This is of course assuming that King's Fall is the returning raid. Given that we just received the Leviathan as a patrol space, it would be a little weird, but kind of funny if next season we got another big ship patrol space. On top of that, coming off the heels of the Witch Queen, we fought a lot of Hive and Taken. We've also had a lot of Eris time recently, which, while not bad, I think we could all use a change of pace, so I'm gonna say this one is unlikely. Next up, we of course have a Rasputin and Anna Bray themed story. I feel like we've been saying this for a really long time. I think most people feel this one is pretty possible since there has been a lot of Neffel Stronghold and Rasputin lore talk lately, and I mean, Anna Bray has been mute for like a year, so it'd be nice to get some more of her character again. The only thing that makes this one a bit less likely for me is that it would probably revolve around fighting Cabal, something we just did a lot of on the Leviathan. However, in theory, if Bungie was feeling really crazy, they could reintroduce SIVA and have a Rasputin SIVA season with Wrath of the Machine. While I think that is specifically unlikely, Rasputin having some involvement, I'd say it's pretty likely. Finally, the story I'm personally putting my money on is a story revolving around Aramis's revival on Europa. It's looking increasingly likely that Aramis will return in the story to aid the Witness in Lightfall, maybe even as a disciple, but we talk about that in this video. On top of that, we haven't really done anything meaningful on Europa in a while. Yeah, we went there in Witch Queen briefly, but it hasn't really been the main focus. Also, I could absolutely see Bungie kind of fusing these two storylines to make a Rasputin-themed story with Clovis Bray and an Aramis-themed story, especially since we don't really have Mars back yet. Seeing the Brace sisters and our two favorite EXO AI together gearing up for Lightfall, I think would be really, really cool. I don't know that this specifically will happen, but personally, my bet's on a Europa story. As a bonus, because it's never gonna happen, an Ahamkara-themed season. This will never happen, but I'm not gonna stop preaching it even though they're supposed to be extinct, because Ahamkara are the coolest things in Destiny IMO. Also, on that note, How Not to Beat Last Wish is coming soon, and you're not gonna wanna miss that one. Okay, let's talk Arc 3.0, specifically one thing. Will Hunter 
hunters gain a new or returning arc super. You may be thinking, well, why would they? Here's why. All of the 3.0 light subclasses have multiple super options. Void Titan has Bubble and Sentinel, Solar Warlock has Well and Dawnblade, you get the point. Meanwhile, both Arc Titan and Warlock have two very different super choices. Hunter, on the other hand, only has the Arc Staff, and no, I don't think the spinning Arc Staff will continue to be its own super. If anything, that'll just turn into an aspect or an intrinsic ability that the Arc Staff has. So the question then becomes, will Hunters get a new Arc Super to choose from? Maybe, say, Blade Dancer from Destiny 1? Well, I'm gonna say it's very unlikely for two reasons. First of all, Blade Dancer is very similar to Spectral Blades. Like, very similar. Though, I'm sure no one would complain about having more options. However, if you just look at the stasis subclasses, all three of them only have one super, setting the precedent that not all 3.0 subclasses will or need to have multiple supers. So for that reason, I'm sticking with highly unlikely. Though, nothing's impossible. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot to say about Arc 3.0 just because there's not a whole lot to speculate on. We know it's coming, we know it's going to have something to do with speed, but I just really hope it's good. Arc is my favorite subclass. Next up is a new Crucible map. There's not a whole lot to say or go off of here, but honestly, I actually think there's a chance we get a new one. My bet would be on either an old Destiny 1 map, a Leviathan map, or a Dreadnought map. Not a whole lot of reason for this other than that I think Bungie knows how much we need more Crucible maps, and the reception to Disjunction was lukewarm at best, so I'm gonna say this one is likely. But what about a new or returning strike? My guess would be that we either get a new strike or a new Crucible map, and not both, but again, anything is possible. This one really depends on the seasonal story though, so for now, I'm just gonna say possible. Again, kind of dependent on the seasonal story. Finally, let's take kind of a curveball, but not really a curveball, and talk about a new destination. After season 17 with the Leviathan, this is clearly possible to some degree. I think the only candidates here would really be the Dreadnought or any of the vaulted locations, so Titan, Io, Mercury, or Mars coming completely back, which could then obviously lead to more strikes and crucible maps. Even with those possibilities, I still think think this is kind of unlikely, and if you ask me, that's a good thing. I may make a whole video on destinations and how they need some help, but if you ask me, Bungie should really focus more on improving the destinations we have now, rather than introducing new ones that will recede into irrelevancy after a season. But that's just me, again, I may make a whole video on that. If King's Fall does come back, my bet is going to be that they're not going to bring back the Dreadnought as a patrollable space, and that they will instead treat it like Venus and the Vault of Glass, where only the parts of Venus that you need need for Vault of Glass to be playable are present. So there you have it. Those are my final predictions before August 23rd and Season 18. What are your thoughts on the topics we discussed? Feel free to leave your thoughts and predictions down below and let me know if I missed anything. If you like this video, then leaving a like helps me out a whole lot. We got a lot of fun videos in the pipeline, so if you're new around here, consider subscribing. I post fun Destiny content on a regular basis. Also, also, this goes without saying, but I'm absolutely going to be streaming the Lightfall reveal on August 23rd. And if this video goes out when I want it to go out, then I'll on Tuesday, July 26th, we will probably be streaming Last Wish, which will be my and my friend's first completion of Last Wish. We're going to do it completely legitimately. I'm really, really excited about it. Regardless, if you made it to the end, I truly appreciate that. Thank you so much for hanging out, and goodbye.